You know that both the names you see on the screen, Yathrib and Medina, are they names of the same city? Sure. The Quran speaks about the city of Medina with the word Medina many times, but it only uses Yathrib once. Yathrib is used only in Surah Al-Ahzab, that's it. There's no other place where Yathrib is used in the Quran. By the way, both are names of Medina. So you could argue from the devil's advocate point of view, hey, they mean the same thing, right? So why don't I just change Yathrib to what? Medina, or why don't I change Medina to Yathrib? You guys keep talking about Quran is perfect, intricate word choice. You guys know too that Yathrib and Medina is the same thing. So why not put one in the other's place? What's the big deal? What difference does it make? This is a study more so of history. Before the Prophet arrived وسلم, in Medina, what was its name? Yathrib. After he came to the city, he was unanimously declared the leader of that city, and the city was coined Medina Tun Nabi, the city of the Prophet. For short, the city. Medina is short for what? The city of the Prophet. Because literally, Medina means what? The city. So Medina's nickname is Medina actually, that's the nickname. The actual name is Yathrib. Or you could think of it like this. Before the Prophet came, it was Yathrib. After he came, it is Medina. But what's interesting is Surah Al-Ahzab, Surah number 33, actually uses Medina. And uses Yathrib, same Surah. And what's, really, what's interesting on top of that is, Surah Al-Ahzab is a Madani Surah. What do you know about Madani Surahs? Where was the Prophet in Madani Surahs? Sorry, Sanan. He was in Medina. So already the city should have been called what? Medina, but we see the word Yathrib. You see the riddle here? Right? Now here's the thing. Medina was short for Medina to Nabi, city of the Prophet. When Medina was surrounded by enemy forces, some Jewish tribes got together, they came and they convinced the Quraysh to come back and rally after the loss of Uhud. They went around and made alliances with smaller tribes and turned it into a massive army that surrounded the entire city of Medina. The city of Medina was being held hostage for weeks on end. This scary situation was even worsened because people on the inside, there were people on the inside that were Muslims, but some of them were only Muslim by name and actually there weren't, wasn't really Iman in their hearts. What's that group called? The Munafiqun, the hypocrites, right? Now, these, some of these hypocrites, before the Prophet came وسلم, they were the leaders of what city? They were the leaders of Yathrib. When the Prophet came, they had to give up their positions. They had to give up their leadership because now who's the leader? By default, Muhammad وسلم. When they were surrounded, they saw it as an opportunity to rally the forces and say, look what, he, what his leadership got us into. Right? So they say, وَقَالُوا يَا أَهْلَ يَثْرِبْ لَا مُقَامَ لَكُمْ They said, O oh people of Yathrib, there's no place left for you. فَرْجِعُوا Let's go back. Go back to what? Let's go back to making it Yathrib again. Let's go back to the way things were before the Prophet ﷺ had leadership. By using the word Yathrib, you know what they exposed? Their true allegiance. Because if they acknowledged the Messenger as their leader وسلم, what word would they have used? Medina. So just by using that word, Allah caught their word, you know, exposed it in the Qur'an, and what we learn from that is their allegiances, their, their aspirations were, oh, one day it'll be back to Yathrib again. It won't be Medina anymore. This becomes even more evident, more clear, clearer, when we go to other places. Surah Al-Munafiqun, the surah dedicated to who? The hypocrites. Now the surah dedicated to the hypocrites is interesting. It begins with the, the hypocrites going out of their way to show allegiance to the Messenger wasallam. They go out of their way to show allegiance to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. إِذَا جَاءَكَ الْمُنَافِقُونَ قَالُوا نَشْهَدُ إِنَّكَ لَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ When the hypocrites come to you, whenever they come to you, they say, Oh, we bear witness. No doubt you are certainly the Messenger of Allah. Now the Muslim doesn't have to say that to the Messenger every time. Only when he converts. Right? When he accepts it, 
And he says it, otherwise he knows he's the messenger of Allah. But if you're trying to compensate for something you're feeling on the inside, like a child who says, I didn't do it by the way. And you say, what did you not do? <laughs> right? This is a guilty conscience that speaks. It's the guilty conscience that makes them say, we really believe you're the messenger of Allah. And in that surah, to show their allegiance on the outside, they said, لَإِن رَجَعْنَا إِلَى الْمَدِينَةِ لَيَخْرِجَنَّ الْأَعَزُّ مِنْهَا الْأَذَلِ Right? They, they said when we return to Medina, because they were trying to show their allegiance. But when it came to desperate times in Surah Al-Ahzab, the wrong word came out of their mouth. <laughs> and their true allegiances were exposed.